Lesson 50, Jesus the Master. In today's lesson, we will see Jesus as Master. Master means to be a leader and teacher, someone worthy to follow and imitate. Certainly Jesus is worthy of our devotion as dedicated disciples. We shall see that Jesus is Master over the Sabbath, over his apostles, and over physical health. We shall also learn the teachings and principles Jesus taught concerning his kingdom. On the Sabbath day, Jesus and his disciples are eating some grain, and the Pharisees accuse Jesus of breaking the Sabbath law of the Old Testament. Jesus uses an example from the life of David eating the showbread to point out that under certain circumstances it was okay to be excused from following the ritual of the law when some greater good could be served. When Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath day, some Pharisees are very angry about it. The man had a withered hand and could not work, and Jesus wants to heal him so he can work and look after himself. What Jesus was doing was for the glory of God and for the benefit of the crippled man. Therefore Jesus taught that it is okay to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus is master over his disciples leading them, teaching them, and sending them forth to serve. He chose twelve men whom he called apostles, which means one sent forth. They were not greater than other men. They were just selected to do the work that the Lord would assign to them. Jesus is also Lord over physical health, which is seen by his healing of all those who had come to hear him and be healed by him. Jesus provided his disciples many principles that are to govern his kingdom. We can only provide a quick overview of these principles, but we would do well to study these if we are to be his true disciples. Jesus assures his followers who suffer for him great reward and joy. This is the principle of future reward. Those who hunger and are poor and persecuted for following Jesus will have a great reward and joy in heaven. The second principle of his kingdom concerns future judgment. Jesus assures his followers who suffer for him great joy and reward. This is the first principle of future reward. Those who hunger, are poor and persecuted for following Jesus will have great joy and reward in heaven. The second principle of his kingdom concerns future judgment. Those who use religion to get rich, seek pleasure, and the praise of men will hunger, mourn, and fall under God's judgment for their hypocrisy. Jesus then gives us the principle of godly behavior. Those who follow Jesus, the true Christians, are to be marked by love, goodness, grace, humility, and generosity. And these are not to be shown just to those who are good and kind to us, but to our enemies and those who despise us. Jesus develops this teaching further in what we might call the principle of adoption. When Christians learn to love their enemies and not just their friends, and to give to those who take without expecting any return, then they are behaving with the same heart as God, and He is kind to the unthankful and evil. This makes them children of their Heavenly Father. To be God's child means service with a smile, not for pay, but serving just to please the Lord. When the world sees such behavior in the Christian, they will know we are God's children and they will find our Christianity very attractive. We also have the principle of retribution. This means to get something in return for what has been given. Sometimes we are convinced that we can do bad things and not have bad come back upon us, but God is watching over everyone and he will repay all things in their proper time. If we judge, we can expect to be judged. If we condemn, we also shall be condemned, and to the same measure, for God is perfectly just. However, if we forgive, then we shall also be forgiven, 
and when we give we can expect to receive. In fact Jesus adds that when we give we shall get back a good measure pressed down and flowing over. I've seen in the market someone buying beans and their container is filled, shaken to settle and then even more added till it overflows. God is so much more generous than we are and we can be assured that when we give with the right motives God will ensure that our part is full and running over. The last principle that we have in this sermon is the principle of discipleship. Jesus is the master and we are his subjects and we must not be like the blind following the blind or we shall fall into a ditch. Follow the true master who gives light and life and who will not lead us astray. Our master is Jesus and we shall never be greater than our master but we are encouraged to be like him. To be like the Lord Jesus our perfect master will take much time and effort but will yield spiritual joy and fruitfulness. Jesus also warns his disciples not to be quick to correct others when there is still much to correct in ourselves. Trying to remove a speck of dust from your brother's eye will be much easier once I remove the large plank that is blocking my own vision. If we are really Jesus' true disciples, then we shall be identified by our good conduct. For as Jesus said, a good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree, bad fruit. Lastly, Jesus shows the need for his disciples to obey his words, for then they would have a sure foundation and stand against all the storms that might come against them. The foolish does not listen, and their destruction is inevitable. I hope that you will choose to be a wise disciple by learning and obeying the teachings of Jesus. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Luke chapter 6 verse 40.